Welcome back to my channel, friend. I'm Fu, founder of Aventel. In today's video, I will introduce you to the main square system in India Mughal Dynasty 1526-1827, which is one of the greatest imperial India dynasty in history. So, please adjust the time machine accordingly. The time is 1526, the place is Kabul, Afghanistan, and we will disguise it as local trader. Enjoy your ride. Brief history about Mughal dynasty in India Mughal dynasty is the result of a multi-generation conquest of Babur and his descendants. Babur is a Central Asian ruler, descendants of Timur and Genghis Khan. The Mughal had diplomatic ties to Safavid Iran, weapon from Ottoman, trading relationship with European companies. As such, they were able to defeat much larger Indian states and conquer most of India's subcontinent. Under the Mughal, India became the richest country in the world, once accounted for 25% world industrial output, 95% of British imports from Asia. Largest industry include textile and shipbuilding, which as you can see, led to an abundance of clothes and accessories. Like all other empires, Mughal didn't last forever. Many factors contributed to Mughal's decline, financial deficit, war, weather, religious conflict, class conflict, the ruling class forgot themselves in sorceries and abandoned governing tasks, the empire reduced in size, then exists only in name, then were finally removed by the British. Mughal Main Square In Mughal period, all other traditional main squares from previous eras were continued to be won. This video only covers main square that appeared during this period. The Mughal initially used Iran and Mongol clothes, but the thick and heavy costume weren't suitable for the hot Indian weather. They eventually adopted some elements from Hindi clothes into use, some notable items. Zama, a side fastening frock coat with tight fitting bodice, knit in waist and flare skirt reaching to the knees. Yalek, a long under tunic reaching to the floor, usually with short sleeves or sleeveless. Pyjama, a pants with drawstring fastening, ancestor of modern pyjama. Churida, pyjama cut on the bias, much longer than the leg, so fawn at the ankle. Shangwa, a triangularly cut pyjama with a quilted band at the ankle. Poncha, Paka, around the waist of the jama. A long piece of fine fabric was tied like a sash. This was the patka, from which a jeweled sword can be suspended. Patka was hand woven with complex design, or embroidered, or hand painted, or printed. Many made for royalty souls. Textile craftsmanship as its best. Footwear. Many souls came from Iran style. Some of the types as follow. Jyoti. Ornamented so with turned up toes, caps so worn by nobles and kings, Chahavan so with curling turn fixed to the toe, Salim Sahi so decorated in gold, Kut no very lightweight so made of kid leather, Lucknow a large city in northern India was famous for his footwear in Mughal's time and the art of algae, embroidery on leather and velvet footwear was very popular. Headwear, Pakri, Tukban, a universal headwear for both Muslim and Hindus. In India, Tukban proclaims status, religious, caste, and family. To submit your Tukban is a sign of total submission. When a man dies, his Tukban is tied to the head of his eldest son to signify taking the responsibility of the family. Mughals tied their Tukban and then added decoration by way of bejeweled bands, pins, jewelry, or other ornamentation. Caps Caps worn were heavily ornamented and in a variety of style. Chow Gossia Cap made in four segmented. Kut Beda Dom Sep Caps Kashiti Duma Both Sep Cap Dupali Small narrow cap with front and back point. Nukada, cap for nobles, heavily embroidered, mantil, cap usually black velvet, embroidered with gold or silver thread, 
headdress and grooming with the head always covered in turban. It's not certain if men in Mughal period shaved their head or just cut their hair short about facial hair. One thing is certain is Mughal were very proud of their moustache. Maybe date back on the way to Iran 300 BC. Men may shave their facial hair clean, but the moustache were kept intact. The practice continued today. Accessories and jewelry Ornaments were worn not only for the purpose of attracting the attention of others around, but also as a distinctive mark of status, rank and dignity. Most of the travelers agreed that ornaments were the very joy of their hearts. Different types of head ornaments, ear ornaments, nose ornaments, necklace, hand ornaments, waist belts, and ankle foot ornaments were used in the Mughal Empire. Clothes material Fabrics of the time include white goat hair cloth, touch, and pasmina, light and warm wool. Silk were often embroidered with good gold and silver thread and embellished with lace. Any and all of these clothes were regularly scented with rose water. Shawls were reportedly so thin that they could pass through a finger ring. Muslin, a cotton fabric of plain weave, were hand woven in the regions around Dhaka, Bengal, now Bangladesh, and exported to Europe, the Middle East, and other markets. For much of the 17th and 18th centuries, the various muslin has poetic names like Ab i Rawan, meaning running water, and Dab Hawa, meaning woven air. Some of these garments would wear out after a single use. I hope through this video, you can have an overview of the system in India, Mughal dynasty. I'm making this video not as an insider, but an outsider trying to understand. So, if I have incorrect information, feel free to comment down below. On a related note, can you see this beautiful belt? Aventel belt is, is a premium holist site accessible belt made of full grain vegetable tan leather. The belt is available in dozens of colors, link in the description. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.